Bona tarda. L'any passat, l'any 2008, Cosmo Caixa i el Centre de Cerca Matemàtica van organitzar un cicle de conferències sobre grans conjectures matemàtiques amb un notable ressò en la població científica i d'un cert nivell cultural per atendre aquests temes que es van tractar. Aquest any, el cicle que iniciem avui es titula Matemàtiques en les ciències i la societat. Volíem, volem, vaja, oferir les matemàtiques, les matemàtiques no només com a eina d'estudi propi de la pròpia disciplina, sinó com a eina d'estudi aplicat a altres disciplines que en principi, doncs, un sector, diguem-ne, important de la gent culta no ho associa a les matemàtiques. El cicle consta de sis de sis sessions, la d'avui sobre matemàtiques i seguretat de dades, tema evidentment important perquè cada vegada que fem alguna operació així electrònica a vegades tremovem del que ens podrà passar, però normalment no passa res. El mes que ve serà la professora Andrea Bertozzi de la Universitat de Califòrnia, Los Angeles, sobre matemàtiques, criminalitat i swarming. Swarming és una paraula difícil de traduir, però més o menys ja vull dir estols o bancades de peixos, però aplicat a les persones. El mes de març, el professor Mimo Ianelli de Trento, el set de Trento, sobre matemàtiques i epidemiologia. A finals de març, havia de ser el mes d'abril, però serà el 31 de març, el professor José Luis Fernández de la Universitat Autònoma de Madrid i de l'empresa AFI parlarà de matemàtiques i risc financer, un tema també de prou actualitat ara, no? No sé si ens donarà alguna recepta per millorar el nostre rendiment financer, però vaja. I al maig, a primers de maig, el professor David Terman de l'Ohio State University parlarà de matemàtiques i neurociències, què poden fer les matemàtiques pel cervell i què pot fer el cervell per les matemàtiques. I a final de mes, de maig, el professor Joan Girbau, d'un certa dona de Barcelona, ens parlarà de matemàtiques i música, una col·laboració de mil·lenis. Aquest és el cicle, jo espero que sigui ben acceptat per la comunitat que normalment es té en aquest tipus d'activitats. He de dir una cosa per aquells professors d'ensenyament no universitari que vulguin acollir-se al reconeixement d'activitat de formació que es va acordar amb el Departament d'Educació que l'assistència a aquest cicle comptaria com una activitat de formació d'un determinat nombre d'hores. Els que vulguin els que vulguin acollir-se això han de signar a l'entrada, en algun lloc com un punt o altre, no sabria dir jo quin, l'assistència per acreditar que com a mínim necessita un 80% de les vegades. Ara el professor Enric Nart de la Universitat Autònoma de Barcelona presentarà el nostre conferenciant, el professor Gerhard Frey. Bona tarda a tothom. Els de l'auditori i també els que estan seguint la conferència des de Lleida. És un veritable plaer fer la presentació del conferenciant d'avui, del professor Gerhard Frey. El professor Frey és un reputat especialista en teoria de nombres, una disciplina en la qual ha fet valuables contribucions, potser la més popular o la que ha tingut més ressò va ser el fet d'haver dissenyat una estratègia per provar el darrer teorema de Fermat. Bé, de fet, el professor Frey va provar el teorema de Fermat, però utilitzant dues conjectures. Una conjectura de cert sobre formes modulars mòdul P, que després va ser provada per Ken Rivet, i una conjectura de Shimura i Taniyama sobre la modularitat de corbes el·líptiques sobre Q, que va ser provada per Andrew Watts, amb la col·laboració de Richard Taylor i altres. Aquesta contribució va ser que per mitjans dels anys 80, i a finals dels anys 80 el professor Frey va deixar la universitat per anar a l'Institut Führer Experimentale Mathematique, a Essen, 
on va iniciar una nova etapa en la qual, a més a més de continuar fent recerca de molta qualitat en teoria de nombres, es va establir ponts, diguem-ne, entre la matemàtica i la indústria, en aquest cas a Alemanya, fent contactes amb empreses que es podien aprofitar de la seva recerca, sobretot dintre del camp de la seguretat de dades i protocols criptogràfics, perquè es basaven en tècniques aritmètiques. Bé, la seva tasca en aquest institut ha estat realment molt profitosa, potser el que és més destacable és l'escola que ha creat, és un institut que ha rebut centenars de visites d'investigadors de tot el món, però sobretot és un lloc on és ben conegut que els joves que volen fer la tesi doctoral és un lloc ideal per fer-la, perquè el professor Frey ha dirigit potser més de 30 tesis doctorals, a vegades quan jo parlava amb ell o hi coincidia estava dirigint 3 o 4 tesis doctorals simultàniament, i aquesta gent jove sabia que anant a Essen, en aquest IEM, a fer la tesi amb en Frey, aconseguien al cap un cop finalitzada la seva etapa, haver fet un treball d'una excel·lent qualitat que era reconegut pels millors especialistes matemàtics, eren uns treballs que es podia publicar a les millors revistes internacionals, però al mateix temps, al llarg del seu procés de fer la tesi, havia adquirit bé pel treball mateix, bé per l'atmosfera que hi havia en l'institut, un coneixement molt profund de les necessitats industrials i empresarials dintre d'aquest camp de la de la seguretat de les dades i de la criptografia. I aleshores això motivava que potser un tant per cent molt elevat de la gent que feia la tesi amb el doctor Frey després acabava col·locant-se en empreses que treballaven en aquest camp en llocs d'alta qualitat. Bé, potser, per tant, és un conferenciant idoni, eh?, per encetar aquest cicle de matemàtiques i la seva influència o els ponts que pot tenir amb les necessitats de la societat. Per tant, li cedeixo la paraula. Moltíssimes gràcies. So, I'm very happy to be here. And I have to thank Edric for this very nice introduction. I think I did not earn it, but I hear it. Encantat d'aquesta gran presentació que crec que no mereixo. And of course I have to thank Professor Castellet, who has this wonderful series, and it's a great idea and plan to realize And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. And I'm very happy that I am allowed to speak in this series. Feia 30 anys que no venia a Barcelona. I am always happy to be here. The only bad thing is I do not speak Catalan. Tot i que no parlo català, i ho lamento. Però totes les altres coses de Barcelona sí que les sé. Estic content de veure els meus col·legues aquí. Crec que no hi haurà prou matemàtiques. Estic que això no és de Sèbric o potser hi haurà massa per a altres persones i espero que això no els decebi en aquests altres. Bé, comencem, doncs. Tenim... Sí, tenim. Voldria parlar de matemàtiques i la seguretat dels dades. El que sí sé és copiar català, com podeu veure aquí. També això m'ha pogut copiar. Hem vingut aquí per explicar-vos que les matemàtiques estan molt relacionades amb temes molt importants de la vida quotidiana de tothom. De la vida quotidiana de tothom. Molt bé. Hem tingut... In Germany, just ended the year of mathematics. 2008 was the year of mathematics, and there was a lot of activity. And it was very nice for us because everyone told us how important we are. Mathematics is the language of nature, or even of God. I heard today, and no one can exist without mathematics. No science, no mathematics, and every discipline. 
which wants to become a scientist, tries to formulate We seem to be important for society. Well, number theory. Teoria de nombres. Number theory important for society. Es important la teoria de nombres para la nuestra sociedad. What are we doing? Que fem. We are very proud. Estem molt orgullosos de poder dir that if you write down such an equation, escribim aquesta equació, that it has only finitely many solutions. No més té un nombre finit de solucions racionals. Able i que no som capaços de tenir totes aquestes solucions de computar-les. No hem de fer tots els càlculs i tenir totes les solucions. Al final, no és així, però és, en qualsevol cas, un dels esdeveniments més importants de la teoria de nombres del segle XX. I recordo una conferència molt interessant del professor Castellet sobre grans resultats en les matemàtiques del segle XX. Recordo que això en formava part. I això és molt important. Segona cosa, també estem molt orgullosos de poder dir que aquestes no són equacions arbitràries, si mirem els exponents, però mirem que és un tipus especial. No hi ha solucions, almenys no solucions en nombres naturals. Ara podem dir que no n'hi ha. I això és un cas molt important, una part molt important de l'últim tema de Fermat va ser un dels esdeveniments més importants del segle XX en matemàtiques. Però, de nou, això té cap utilitat? We do not even know, but we pretend to follow it. No sabem, però fingim que sabem el segle. És un bon exercici per les persones que els agraden els nombres. Fem qualsevol número 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 que els agraden els nombres. Fem qualsevol But the number C is smaller than the square of this product of it. This is a special case of the so-called ABC conjecture. Es un caso especial de la conjetura ABC. Es una de las cuestiones más importantes que yo arithmetic geometry and for the fundamental equations for the 20th century. It's a nice game to look at whether it's true or not. It's a very good game, very interesting. But again, is it important? Oh, there was a famous mathematician, Harding, number theories, and he has written a very, very nice and I think interesting book, A Mathematician's Apology. And he says, no, number theory is not applicable. And this is the good thing about it. For when we have not to fear that there is evidence, and so this is why I am a number theorist, he was a pacifist. Era pacifista, era un home molt escèptic i va dir, molt bé, teoria de nombres. No, no té aplicació. Va dir que era un home molt escèptic. Va dir que era un home molt escèptic. I després va sortir la teoria matemàtica a teories matemàtiques aplicades a la biologia. Per tant, no podia evitar les seves aplicacions. En qualsevol cas, la teoria de nombres, per què no es pot fer servir? Però avui dia, després d'aquesta visió clàssica, 50 o 60 anys després de Hardy, podem dir que sí. I l'objectiu d'aquesta ponència és convèncer-nos i també convèncer-nos a nosaltres com a matemàtics que la societat moderna no podria pas existir sense la teoria de nombres. Grans paraules, no? Tots depeneu de la teoria de nombres. Ara saltaré una mica cap a una de les aplicacions més importants de la teoria de nombres. 
Let us look at electronic passports. Now I do not know whether you have in no Spain sé already electronic si ja passports. There's digital data already. In Germany we have it for years eh? or so. Uh, yes, Alemania the second generation. Uh, uh, what is the uh, special thing it is since a long time, passports are documents which can be read by machines automatically. And you all know this, wherever you go, they take your passport through a machine, and there are some numbers at the bottom, and they are read, and so everyone knows who was traveling, where, and why. It may be not why, but it's where. Okay, but now, with digital data are enriched. Enriching always is dangerous. For enriching means you give more information away from yourself. And so you have to have a delicate balance. Of course you want that uh, no criminal people should use technical opportunities. Uh, and that no criminals are traveling with you in the airplane. Per, per, um, so this is a public interest. Per, uh, avió, but on the other side, you public, have a private interest. They mean the privacy of data. You do not want that everyone knows your private data. And then there is a common interest of all uh, parties. It should not be possible that your data, your documents, are abused by other people and forged. So these are three things which have to be fixed. Okay. What is a classical electronic passport? You see one, the one you find everywhere. Mustermann means in German that's just the usual name means nothing. And it is already a really complicated document. Here you see the machine-readable zone. Here you see some holograms. And here too, you see there's a hologram behind. And here there is another hologram inside showing that this is a German passport. And it is really a very, very sophisticated document. And I think it's not easy to falsify, but it happens. So, new things you do, you expand the data by using, for instance, magnetic stripes of high density, things, or chips, or barcodes, two-dimensional barcodes, and optical devices. And what do you put on the passport? Uh, biometrical data, such as uh, portrait. This is done already in an analog way by a photograph, but now it is done in a digital way too. So there are two pictures of yourself on the passport. Fingerprints and voice and eyes and maybe your hand or whatever. So there are a lot of possibilities to enrich the usual classical data of passports by uh, new and coded features. And here it shows you this is a picture of a fingerprint, but then the machine only takes certain and we are in codes. Okay. Having this, it is of no use to have it, such a technique, if it can be forged, and if someone can put a picture in a passport, an electronic version of it, which is totally different, and there is no relation to check that both are the same. So, you need a lot of assets for security. For instance, you have to have that your personal data are really authentic. But no biometric data are uh, changed and that any changing is detected. And you want that your data 
cannot be read by other people no which are not authorized to read. No so authorized maybe on a passport, this may be not so important, but Potser if you have received things on uh, insurance cards and health cards and so on and so on, taxpayers, uh, so you really do not want that your data can be read by everyone, but only by the authorities which are authorized legitimades per fer-ho. Ok. Molt bé. Then, a passport has to be unique. El passaport també ha de ser únic. It should be not possible to be cloned. No ha de ser possible clonar-lo. And the printed data i les dades impreses and the digital data i les dades digitals repeated have to be protected. Ho repeteixo, s'han de protegir. Okay, how to do this? Com es fa això? First, it's a very, very complicated layer. En primer lloc, tenim una capa molt complicada. First, you have to store your biometric data. Now, this is a thing of, let's say, computer scientists and engineers. És una cosa dels informàtics i dels engineers. Però després, you have to have the authenticity secured by a signature. And of course, it's not a handwritten signature, as it is nowadays on the passport. It is a digital signature. And there comes already, now comes some keywords, I will explain later on in more detail. PKI infrastructure. It means a public key infrastructure. It's a whole machinery which together make sure that your data are really signed and no one can change it. Then you want to have privacy. Now, not all countries do you uh, do want to have this. In Germany, we have this inside. And there you use, now comes for the first time, crypto. This is short for cryptology. And the second word is, is symmetric cryptology. Next thing is especially sensitive data should be secured. For instance, your face is not so sensitive. Everyone can see it and you cannot avoid it. But your fingerprint is something you do not want to keep away. So most people, when they go to, let's say, United States, they do not care about being photographed. But they do not like the idea to keep a fingerprint. So with sensitive data, have to be additional secured and again you see the word crypto and there you see symmetric and asymmetric crypto have become too bad. Okay, and then cloning has to be prevented as I have explained again and for this again there comes the word asymmetric crypto. I have to come to this later. Anyway, you see already that having a passport using the digital world is a complicated thing. And by the way, there are many, many traps you can fall into constructing such a thing. And we sincerely hope that on our passport there is not such a trap. But this only the future will show. Now let me come to a more general philosophy. I think mankind has a very old dream. Everyone wants to communicate. We always want to speak. And yes, but with a restriction. We want to have a choice with whom we speak. So only with privileged partners. Okay. Problems coming from this choice are derivats d'aquesta capacitat. Open channels are used for communication. For instance, I am speaking here at this table with Professor Castellet. We speak something which we do not want that you know it. And if the microphone is on, this can be embraced. Of course, we are speaking and you can listen to it. And so we should just have as a fundamental effect that all channels we use, all channels we use, all these channels are public. 
You can listen by technical means to everything. Next is misinterpretation. Now this can come from a context. Mathematicians cannot do anything against that. But it can just come by a disturbance in the transmission. So I do not hear so well, so sometimes I understand things in the wrong way. Or your mobile phone uh, is not a good, uh, is not in a good uh, area. And so you can listen only uh, very weakly to what your partner is saying. So that is Then, of course, eavesdropping. This is really uh, uh, another human uh, basic instinct to listen if some people are speaking. Huh? But of course, I mean it in a technical way. And then, of course, fortune. And this could not be allowed. Okay. So we are in the area of data security. We want to make data secure and communication of data secure. If we think what we need is, Alice wants to send a message to Bob. Okay. The first step is she has to transform the idea she has to into a form such that it can be tra transported. And we use language, scripture, or bits. And I would say this is the duty of civilization. It gives us the means of communication. Uh, it gives us the transformation of ideas to something which can be transformed. Okay, next thing is sending a message means you have to have a channel where you can send the message. Now the channel can be the air if you are close enough. Or it can be a street. If you write a letter, you need a street where the letter can be transported from one part to the other. Or you need a net or a wireless net where you can log in and send your message. So streets, mail, electronic transmission, and the engineers. And they do. Okay. Then, misinterpretation. As I said, a channel will be insecure, noisy, and public. And insecure and noisy means that messages are changed, there are errors coming into, and here, for the first time, and this was, I think, in the 70s, uh, maybe 60s already, the last century, number theory had a major application. Namely, you want to repair errors during transmission in a most economical way. And you do this by coding theory. And coding theory was the first major application of number theory and theory of curves over finite fields to daily life. And all the very, very nice pictures, you see, for instance, I, I, I did not see, but surely there are inside of this museum, where you see pictures from the space. Uh, they are not possible without coding theory, because the transmission quality is too bad to have direct Okay, this is already a major application of number theory, but this is not the main point I want to make. Main subject is cryptography. This is to secure Authenticity Alice, and privacy. And uh, since uh, this series of talks is organized by a bank, I should say, of course, it has to be cheap. Uh, and it has to be simple. No one should, uh, 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 it should be not necessary that you are a mathematician and have a master degree in order to send a message. So it has to be so easy that everyone can press a button and then it works. Okay. And this now is done really by number theory. 
mitjançant la teoria de nombres. And we have to work together with computer scientists, we have to work together with engineers, we even have to work together with uh, law people, and so this is really a very, very big interdisciplinary part of science, where number theory is, let's say, the sine qua non, if you do not have the ingredients coming from number theory, you can't do it. Okay. Now, how to hide information? There are, yeah, it's an old art, and I do not know of any Civilization no with a scripture system which had not techniques to do with. So it seems whenever you no begin to write, you think about how to hide information. And there are two ways to do it. One is steganography, and this is just you hide the message. For instance, you write with an ink which becomes invisible. And after some time, if you have, uh, if you heat it, it becomes visible again. Or, I know another example, someone wanted to send in classical time uh, a message, I think from the Persian court to the Greeks. There will be soon an attack, and so he took a slave and wrote the message to the head and waited till the hair was grown again and then sent the slave and the other one shaved the slave and saw the message. So this is hiding information. Next strategy, and I think the better one, is to change the message by cryptography, to make the message not readable anymore. And so you encrypt the message, and this means that a plain text is transformed transforma into a cipher text. text and you even can use a different alphabet. And you do the transformation in such a way such that the result seems to be complete nonsense. Now, this is not a mathematical or scientific notion. No es un concepte matemàtic ni científic. The theory of information, information theory, and it says the message cannot be distinguished from a random message. It looks like a random message. This is the aim. When you have a secure encryption. Okay, give you an example, and it's a bad example. It looks like nonsense. But in fact, it can be very easy to decrypt. Decryption means coming back to the plain text. So, you are bored, you know, just try it during the rest of the week. What does this... It's a statement. What is a statement? And of course, I think every one of you in during the time you were a pupil at school knew such so it is not a good example. It's a good example for a bad example. Okay. From five attacks, we should not get the plain text without knowing a key, a special information. And this means security. And it should be impossible to find the key. The key has to be given to you, otherwise you cannot get the plain text back. Note that the whole business does not depend on complication. And there is no security by obscurity. Sometimes you scramble things in a terrible way and then something comes out and everyone says this is secure. It turns out it's not secure. It has to be a very clean and publicly known procedure how you change the plain text to a cipher text. People who are doing this are doing the work in cryptology, 
and we are doing cryptography. And the other ones on the other side who want to decipher without knowing the text are doing crypt analysis. So we do attack the system. And in most times, we are the same people. So in the morning, we develop a crypto system, and in the afternoon, we destroy it. But it's, but it's very important uh, to check, and sometimes one just gives challenging to the public, and even you can earn money by uh, cracking a system. And only if, uh, uh, after a, a, a certain time, when many people have tried to break a system and no one succeeded, you are feeling better as a cryptographist però i de les com a criptògrafs et sents millor perquè sembla que estigui segur, okay. però bueno, al final moltes coses s'acaben desxifrant. How was cryptography, com? which will be the center of this talk, done in classical times? Com es feia That's really a very, a very classics. old art. És un uh, art, com deia, molt i molt you antic. See what, uh, what happened in history. For instance, instance, I cannot read this, exemple, no even without llegir. cryptography. So it is a cuneiform, and it is uh, was, uh, written uh, 1,500 years before Christ in Mesopotamia. For me, it is cryptography uh, enough. But of course, uh, our uh, uh, scientists, archaeologists, were able to decipher it. But here, uh, the uh, one who wrote this, did something uh, in addition, left out some uh, uh, syllables, left out some consonants, and used uh, multiple spelling. So this is not really the text you would expect. So it's more difficult to be read than an original text. Next example comes from Sweden, and it is a, a uh, a stone with runes on it. Es un it's 800 after Christ, something about that. And what we did, we just uh, used a different rune alphabet. And, uh, 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 and uh, it complicate the whole text. Per so el text. it is not a uh, very clever way to do it, but if someone was not well educated, he could not no read what was written on it. Now we think no that uh, one thing no that this text. stone was just uh, 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 written Aquesta not to uh, hide a message, no but to show how clever the one was who uh, 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 could write so well with Here comes something which has to do with a bad example I've given you. This is a cipher. This it was used in the American Civil War, uh, but it was used by Zisa already. And you see, the thing is that you have two circles. Here there are the letters, and here are numbers. And now you attach to every letter a number. And if you write these numbers instead of the letters. And of course, the refined thing is you can, uh, you can rotate this in a disc, and then the coding is a different one. So you have to know in which way this cipher disk is, in which state it is, in order to be able to decide. Right? Here is a famous machine, the Enigma. Enigma, and you maybe have seen the movie, uh, I think everything in the movie is wrong, <laughs> but uh, it uh, was a popular movie, and this is now a mixture already of an uh, electrical and mechanical machine. And it has two uh, four rotors, and if you type something inside, and but then by some wiring, a totally different combination comes And this machine is unbreakable, unbreakable till today. It was broken because of bad uh, protocol. The usage was not done in the right way, mm, not the machine. Per un mal protocol, el and of course, now it is too much no too slow. But it is secure till nowadays. If you use it in segura. the right way, si es fa, si es fa servir bé. not done. Això sí. Here you see countermeasures. Aquí there was another system used by Germans, by Lord's machine. Una uh, this was called Colossus. 
<coughs> in Lechey Park. And you see, it's really an impressive <coughs> machine, and many people had to work on it. It was a kind of computer, and the interesting thing is that during a very uh, famous mathematician was uh, uh, involved in this molt important in Turing va participar i de de manera de fer okay. pensar en aquesta màquina. Què passa en els temps moderns? Have to do with series of bits. We are now used not to write letters from our alphabet, but just to write numbers between 0 and 1. And we call this a bit, a bit of information. And so computers can be used to encrypt and to decrypt and to attack. And the modern system, first one based on this bit presentation of messages was DES, Digital uh, en Encryption System Standard, uh, and standard it was astonishingly good, but nowadays bo, one uses AES and E stand for Advanced. And what we can see today is that this is a very, very efficient and secure system. Very fast, and one uses it all the time. It's standard, uh, standard method to encrypt messages. And here you see for D as a machine. No longer you are typing something or rotating everything. Everything is done by uh, chips. Okay. So you see already we are dealing with numbers. Namely, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 strings of bits. But uh, to our disappointment, we do not use deep mathematics. If you look at it, it is combinatoric. It, 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 one, one word. Not deep mathematics does not mean that things are simple no and no easy easy and everyone can no find it. Fàcil, it only means the methods we use esbrinar, are not, not in a very sophisticated no area of mathematics. Okay, one uses combinatoric probability theory, but of a very simple one, just counting how many accidents are occurring. Group theory, but just permutations and counting how many permutations there are, and everything at a mostly elementary level. And no number theory. But, of course, we want to apply number three. So something has to happen in order that I come to the subject of my talk. What is the special thing about the systems I have shown you? They are symmetrics. There is a common sequence. Symmetrics. And two people have to know a common secret uh, before Abans they use the decryption and encryption. Now, this was quite easy in classical systems where there were only very few people who wanted to communicate and they could trust or not trust Anyway, today we have no chance. No, we have open electronic networks. We have millions of people who travel and millions of people who want to go to the internet. And they all want to have a secure communication. So it is impossible that they have a common secret before they go to public. And but we cannot rely on any personal trust or communication. So it would have been a disaster for security if there would not have been, just in time, the groundbreaking idea of Diffie and Hellman 1976 to change the whole world of cryptography by introducing to the symmetric system the asymmetric system, and in the passport you saw, you saw the word asymmetric occurring already. What is the special thing? Each partner has now two keys, a private claus, one una which never privada, leaves his secure environment. The best friend should not know this private segur. key. Es a dir, and there is a public key, and everyone privada, should know perdó. it. You want to publish it in such a way that everyone 
Publica, no tant, però tothom que vol comunicar-se coneix i ha de conèixer aquesta clau pública. I ha de portar dues claus. Aquestes dues claus estan relacionades mitjançant un procediment matemàtic. Hi ha una funció anomenada unidireccional. I què és una funció unidireccional? És a dir, tens una funció que pots introduir un valor i pots computar aquest valor per la funció i això s'ha de fer de manera molt ràpida. És a dir, tens la teva clau secreta i avalues la funció i obtens una clau pública. Però la millor estratègia To fight for a given value of a function, an argument which gives this value, best strategy should be trial and error. No fast way to compute the inverse of the function. This is why it is a one-way function. Ha de ser una funció realment unidireccional. No ha de ser fàcil trobar la direcció inversa es pot fer servir un mètode escolar per multiplicar de manera molt ràpida nombres molt i molt elevats. Però la factorització no és fàcil. És una altra cosa. La factorització significa que hi ha maneres diverses de fer-ho. Tens un nombre i vols trobar els factors excursos. És a dir, pots fer-ho en un... És una mica millor, el segon és un divisor, que és el producte de tot el nombre n, tens un mig quadrat de n, i aquest és un nombre més ingenu, i és una mica més gran. Per tant, si tens un nombre de 300 dígits, has to do 10 power 150 trials, and the universe has 1 intents, i l'univers té 10 a la potència 60 partícules. Imagineu-vos quants intents hauries de fer, molt més que no pas l'univers. Però amb la teoria de nombres profunda ens dona resultats espectacularment millors mitjançant un setàs. La complexitat no és aquesta, no és exponencial. I és molt més ràpid al mateix temps. I avui dia us hem obligat a agafar 700 dígits per tenir seguretat contra la factorització. I això és el que fan servir sistemes anomenats RSA. Aquí tenim una definició informal d'una funció unidireccional. De fet, he de confessar que no sabem si existeixen aquestes funcions unidireccionals. Hi ha unes conjectures que ens han donat una cifra, però no sabem encara si és realment cert o no. Volem saber si la complexitat de la funció és correcta o no. Per tant, la inversa de la funció de la inversa de la funció ha de ser en el polinomial. En qualsevol cas, podem buscar funcions que es comporten com a funcions unidireccionals. And I shall now explain in the last third of the talk a very important family of such candidates. Be careful for one-way functions. And they are so-called discrete logarithms. So let us concentrate to key exchange. So Alice and Bob want to share a secret number. And they have no possibility to do this in secrecy, so we have to do this in public. We begin with a very naive example. Secret number. We both like the number two. When Alice chooses a random number, Bob chooses a random number, this is the secret key. When Alice computes two power Secret number and publishes the result. And Bob computes two power his secret number and publishes the result. Dos a la potència i B fa el mateix amb el seu número. I obté aquestes coses públiques. But Alice can power this number by her secret SA. 
mitjançant el seu número uh, secret S.A. Bob S. can compute the public S. number of Alice Bob by his secret number amb el seu S. número secret S.A.B. And then the result is the same. I el resultat és S.A.B. Because 2 power A times B is the same as 2 power Perquè B times A. Okay. Es so we have the same number. I'll give you an example. No so Alice nombre. chooses three, per tant, Bob Alice chooses five. Okay. I Bob el and so we compute eight and 32. I and we publish eight and 32. I 32. Then I Alice, Alice computes 32 Alice com power three, computa tres, and Bob computes eight Bob computa vuit a la cinc, uh, a la tres. Això està malament? No, és així. There is a, should be a five. No, a sí que està malament. Excuse és un cinc. Vuit a, a la cinc. Okay. No és vuit a la tres, sinó vuit a la cinc. I el resultat és 32.768. For both of them. Per tots dos. And please excuse for misprint. I lamento aquest error. Ok. Is this secure? És això, Now això I have given segur. number eight. No, and everyone here vuit, knows eight is two power three. So you find from a number eight the number three. És a dir, que ja and this is a secret, and it is publicly known. Okay? And in general, if you have a general, number si un which is 2 power k, then it is very easy to compute this number k by taking a logarithm or looking at the size. So it is a very bad system. But the idea is nice. We have to break this possibility to use something like a logarithm. And so we have to go to so-called finite objects. We have to replace the natural numbers with elements in a finite group. I will speak about this. We have to replace the number 2 by an element in this group. And when we do kick change just as So what is a group? A group is a basic structure in mathematics. Here everywhere. It is a set with a property but given two elements, you can, depending on what you like, multiplying or adding, this means composing two elements, and you get again an element in the group, and there are a certain rules satisfied you are used to in, let's say, rational numbers or real numbers. Such a group is finite if it has only finitely many elements. Now I give you a simple example, but we are in our a uh, uh, game, the most important ones. Que son you choose a prime number and all numbers between nombre 0 and p minus 1 and call this as p. So these are p numbers, the first p numbers. And then you add two such numbers just by adding the numbers and then subtracting a multiple by... Yeah, you are just looking for the smallest residue per of A plus B is a number between 0 and P minus 1, such that A plus B minus this number is divisible by P. I will give you an example. And Us the un example. Do, uh, the same way in English this is called the clockwise addition and multiplication, La because the number 12, the clock always does this, going to 12 and then beginning with 1 again. This is more the law. Example, p equals to 5. 2 plus, four, exemple, two si plus, cinc, two plus 4 is 6, is but this too large. Per and the number 1 has the property 6 mm. minus 1 is divisible by 5. 3 plus six, 2 is 5. Is 5 is too large, cinc. but 0 is 0. This number okay. minus 0 is divisible by 5. Aquest numero, menys 2 aquest times 4 is 8. Es minus 3 is 5, so 2 times 4 minus 3 is divisible by 5, so we say 2 times 4 is equal to 3. 2 times 3 is 6, okay, the residue is 1, so the product is 1. Okay, now inside of this set, there are the numbers between 1 and p minus 1, and with multiplication and doing the same type of computing, you get again a finite group now with p minus 1 elements. And the nice thing is, this addition and multiplication fit together, and what you get is a field, and I will use this name later on. Okay, now we need the notion of multiple, so having an element A and a number K, I just multiply this one A T times with itself and say this is A B. 
our k and if I uh, write uh, my composition with a plus and I see k times just the notation. Uh, For example, 2 power 3 is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 is modulo 5 equal to 3. Or 3 times 2, now additively, is 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6 is 1, modulo 5. Okay. Now, this is the key exchange. We have a group, we have a publicly known element G0, we have a secret number as A and as B as before, we publish G0 power as A, group element, we publish G0 power as B, and then one computes PB as A, partner A, and PA as B, partner B, and because of the rules of multiplication in groups, one gets what comes de la multiplicación en groups Okay, just the same as we did with numbers. Es el mateix que hem fet amb what is the security? Per la the security depends on the following problem. You know A, which is our Saps G0, you know B, a, and you want B to find K such K that B is A power K. B is igual a and a this K. K is called the discrete I logarithm. K Es el que anomenem ok, I'll give you an example. Us donaré un exemple. Go to this F5, a numbers si 1, 2, 3, 5, 4, with multiplication, t equal 2, b equal 3, when a squared a is 4, a cubed a is 3. Es 3. This means the Qual logarithm el of 3 de with base a is equal to 3. Es igual a 3. Or, o take the additive F5, you take A equals 2, B equals 3, just as here, 2 times A is 4, 3 times A is 1, 4 times A is 3, so the logarithm of B is 4. See, it depends on the structure of a group. To make the key exchange I have sketched secure, you have to have that this discrete log is a one-way function, so it is very hard to find, okay. So now finally we are in mathematics, namely, please, dear mathematicians, find groups such that we can compute with them, so we are not too complicated. No Secondly, en segon lloc, the group composition la is group easy. Es, uh, ha de ser and fàcil thirdly, de most I important lloc, thing, the computation of a discrete log is very, very hard. Es molt Please molt give us such groups. Then we can build a crypto system. No and this very easily, G has to be a group with Q elements, G is a prime number, Q has to be large and at least equal to 8 digits. Okay, Bé, challenging task for number theory, find such candidates for good G, uh, and the good news for number theory is yes, we can do that. And why? Because we have arithmetic geometry, and arithmetic geometry is a generalization of what you know from school called analytic geometry. This was uh, done by Descartes, eh, and Descartes it combined combina algebraic manipulations of formulas with uh, geometric objects. Now, arithmetic geometry, I would say, following Grotendieck, one of the greatest mathematicians of the, ni of the 20th century, at all, is to combine so-called algebraic geometry with number theory and outcome arithmetic geometry uh, using algebraic geometry, number theory, complex functions and especially modern Galois theory. And this theory was very successfully applied to many hard problems in number theory like Falting's proof of models conjecture Fermat's last theorem, and even to the ABZ conjecture to some extent. And, and this is the nice thing for me, it can, it is the best method to find groups for the system. Now, already at the very early stage, 
it was, was proposed ja, that the groups we are looking for are solutions of polynomial equations over finite fields, so-called algebraic rational points of algebraic groups. And in fact, F P with plus is an example, but it is very bad already by elementary numbers we're using. The multiplicative group is better at exponentially uh, multiplication good as vectoring, but not optimal. But again, here you get, to get with results, you use really very advanced number theory. But we can, we hope that we can do better by using more complicated objects. Here it is written, device a class group of curves of one or two. This is now really the heart of arithmetic geometry. I give you the most important example. We have an equation of this easy type. Forget the z, well, it is just an affine cubic equation in a plane. It's called an elliptic curve. The special property, this is the image of such an elliptic curve, is that you can add the points. Here, take a point P and a point Q, draw the line through P and Q, you have a third section R, and this is the minus the sum of the two points. And there are some degenerations, and you can So this is very easy, and you can use the analytic geometry, I have said before, to get formulas for the coordinates of the points which occur as addition in this procedure. And these are quite easy formulas, and computers like the formulas. So we can compute on analytic curves. So this is typical analytic geometry. So we could use the real numbers, and the pictures of the curves we had were over real numbers. Can we use this group as, uh, for key exchange? Is it discrete? The answer is no. But this is already a little bit advanced. What we have to do is we have to go to curves over this tiny groups Numbers from 1 to p minus 1, 0 to p minus 1, I have introduced before, who called finite fields. And we have to look for solutions of these equations over the finite fields, when this is a finite group. And uh, I want to show you how it looks like. So this is the picture now of an elliptic curve over a finite field. And you see a symmetry uh, along uh, uh, 15, but otherwise it doesn't look like a curve. It really points by point. OK. Now choose a random point. This one. Now we want to compute the multiples. And for instance, this is two times the point. Here comes three times the point. Here comes four times the point. Five times the point. Six times, Six, seven, eight, eight eight, nine, no, ten, deu, eleven, onze, twelve, onze, thirteen, treze, fourteen, catorze, fifteen, quinze, sixteen, setze, seventeen, deu, eighteen, deu, nineteen, deu, twenty, twenty-one, deu, twenty-two, deu, ah, where's twenty-two? Twenty-two. Here, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Stop. Now you see all the points are connected. And it's really a fuzzy graph. What is the discrete log? You have a point here, maybe this one, and a point here, but you have forgotten the graph. And then you have to find the way how to go there. This is looks really very difficult. But be cautious. This does not necessarily, necessarily mean that the discrete log is hard. It only gives us how. Now we really have to use arithmetic geometry. And especially we have to use Galois group operations on points of elliptic curves. OK. First problem, problem, find an elliptic curve elliptic over a finite field such that you have a uh, nice number of points should be nearly a prime number. It's a difficult problem. You have to be able to primer. count points 
a very large area, you cannot do it naively. And in fact, you use the most abstract theory, analytic homology, to do this in the most efficient way. Secondly, analyze the attacks you have. Now a very big structure behind. Maybe you have many ways to attack. Okay, you use really deep things for mathematics, including class field theory. And in fact, it comes out that there are bad choices. There are elliptic curves which are not secure, but most of them are. And if we go to much more complicated curves, one could think we come to more secure areas. The converse is true. They are not secure. Okay, here's a big curve. Take this curve over a field such that P mi minus 3 is divisible by 4, or n is the last type of n by 0, 3, like 103, when the discrete log is not secure. Someone who does not understand algebraic geometry and arithmetic does not know why this is so. But the good news is that there are secure curves. And here is one. This is the one which is traveling on German passports. And it is written in a strange way. This is not a new encryption. I just used uh, uh, the system of ciphers no, based on the powers no, of 16 in order to have not so large la, la numbers. It's a very good, a publicly known elliptic curve is with two switches above. And uh, the second publica. one for the features which are uh, more no, sensitive, it has 256 mes, bits. Mes, Again, mes it's publicly known cinc, and you are challenged to bits, break the discrete log on these curves. Okay, Bé. to conclude, per I hope that I have convinced you that arithmetic geometry and so number theory is crucial for our modern civilization based on electronic communication. This communication would not be possible without the contributions of arithmetic geometry, number theory. And so we number theorists should not hesitate to seize the opportunity and to take responsibility. We should be not too fine, like hearty, to make our heads dirty by doing things which can be applied. Okay. But on the other side, the society should not forget that the results we use, they are found not to develop cryptography, but to do mathematics on a high, best possible level, without the aim of direct application. So, please, let mathematicians do their work with emphasis for high quality. Applications will form. Thank you very much. Moltes gràcies al professor Frey per la xerrada tan interessant que ens ha donat. I ara, si voleu, podem destinar una breu estona a fer algunes preguntes. Des de Lleida també em sembla que m'han dit que podeu preguntar. Si feu algun signe, llavors us diré la paraula. Jo també he d'estar pendent de la pantalla per si ho demana algú de Lleida. I podeu fer les preguntes en català o en castellà, si voleu, també, perquè disposem d'un servei de traducció simultània. La meva pregunta seria com influirà les noves tecnologies a nivell de física quàntica, ordinadors quàntics, tota aquesta nova física que s'està desenvolupant. Actualment a Suïssa ja s'han fet proves en aquest aspecte. 
tota, tota aquesta criptografia que hem estat veient fins ara serà d'alguna forma paper mullat en quan aquesta tecnologia sigui bé, comercialment factible? Uh, yeah, I, I know this problem. Sí, conec uh, el problema. Sí, sí, sí. Uh, well, uh, if you are very rigorous, uh, as soon as you have random computers, uh, not random information, quantics, this is something totally different. No, but as soon as you have random computers, uh, you can solve the problem of discrete logs in every group. Podran resoldre els problemes dels logaritmes discrets en qualsevol grup en temps polinòmil. And it's even hard I to find uh, ways out of these things what a quantum computer can do. I think it's, it's a pure computer, but it can find periodicity, uh, the period of functions. It is, uh, 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 so we always uh, say, we have a candidate for a one-way function in special groups. Uh, unidireccionals en els grups especials, amb les tecnologies algorithms. conegudes, conegudes perdó, i amb els algoritmes coneguts. For the other, uh, the other danger is someone finds an algorithm to compute on this elliptic curve very efficiently. Hi ha maneres molt eficients no, de trobar uh, to, uh, to solucions a aquestes uh, corbes el·líptiques. So, no, clar, uh, la tecnologia now, uh, que farà specific to the quantum computer. We have now we live nowadays and for the next 50 years Vivim we believe people present. doing quantum computing there will be no si danger. Mm, creiem els que estan desenvolupant els ordinadors quàntics no hi haurà perill en aquest sentit. Si ens els hem de creure. Uh, it is not sure whether the uh, no the clar. area you need to get to higher si qubit el camp que necessitem per es arribar a un, o a un uh, cúbic més gran és lineal o quadràtic. If it's quadratic, uh, the quantum computer will lose the race. El segon cas, we will make a larger group, la, el coordinador quàntic tindrà la, la particularitat to, uh, o la dificultat que farà grups més grans i serà molt més difícil després crear un ordinador més If potent. If it is linear, we are lost. Si és lineal, estem perduts. Ah. So, a, a very pragmatic thing. I'm a mathematician no, 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 and I like this mathematics. mathematics. I'm happy that I we can uh, apply it nowadays. And that we have a method to have security of data for the next Tenim 10 years. Or, or we do not dare to predict. En el en els Even in the classical area. Més enllà no podem predir. And uh, when quantum computers are coming, I quan arribin els ordinadors quàntics, we will study the unitarian representations in more detail and then find new methods I to hide our information. Una pregunta més? Are there any further questions? Uh, I microphone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this uh, deep theory of elliptic curves invo involved in, in this program, uh, like regularity or Pirchin Suniter Suniter Torn Dyer conjecture, involved in this program, or just the elementary one, just o només when you have la, the notion of elliptic curve, then you have a way to, to addition and then an expugnable way of doing log. I una manera exponencialment de desenvolupar el logaritme. Uh, this is a very uh, nice question for, it is very important for us. Molt bona pregunta perquè és molt important per nosaltres. Uh, let me show you... Uh, For instance, attacks. Hmm? We have to Podem analyze. Uh, there you do uh, scalar restriction Aquí index calculus and duality theorems. The duality theorems are duality theorems coming from classical theory and uh, have to do with a power group of local and global fields. And uh, so uh, there we really need 
the deepest part of mathematics we have today. Otherwise, we, can, we would not find these attacks and we would not see that these certain curves are not secure. To count points, we have to use the L series. And, uh, of course, we only are interested in points over finite years. So one could think of taking the fingers. Of 10 power 8, these fingers we do not have. So we really compute the uh, cohomology in order to compute the action of the Frobenius. And uh, this is the local part of the L-series. And we can do this quite well in small characteristics by periodic. Uh, which means rigid uh, 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 cohomology with crystalline uh, support. Uh, we can or, uh, yes, uh, and for elliptic curves. We are not able to do this for hyper elliptic curves, or genus 2 is important. No what we need then is the theory of complex multiplication of hyper elliptic curves. And this is a global theory. So we are very near to. Uh, Birch and Swinnerton Dyer. We need modular forms, <laughs> and it is very nice to have a L series in the yeah, model as a modular form, and point counting is very easy sometimes. So, you see, we use really everything, and the user only has to know the addition formula to implement the system and, be, and to believe that uh, the curve I have given here uh, in the end is a secure one, but it is tested against everyone. For instance, pairing. Pairing is not about pairing with duality. You have to test that the curve is not subject to this attack. And then you can sit down and you only have to use attacks. Thank you. Alguna pregunta o comentari més? Bé, doncs si no hi ha més preguntes, agraïm un altre cop al conferenciant per la xerrada.